Hello and welcome to today's featured product review. Today's product is from the developers of Dynalink who brought to you the recent Dynalink TV dongle and is now releasing their brand new Wi-Fi 6 AX3600 router, the Dynalink DLWRX36. Most of you by now may have heard of the new Wi-Fi standard called Wi-Fi 6 or by its other name 802.11ax. Whilst the world is yet to fully embrace Wi-Fi 6, there are lots of places and devices that are already using this new technology. There is much benefit to gain when applying this router to a device that is Wi-Fi 6 compatible, but at the same time, there are a few performance improvements one can gain by backwards applying it to your existing Wi-Fi 5 or wireless AC devices. In this review, we look at its design its input-output peripherals, its interface, along with a live demonstration, and you'll get to decide whether you want to future-proof your home or office or simply give yourself a Wi-Fi performance upgrade. So stay tuned, that's up next. So in the box you get the router itself, a 12 volt 3 amps DC power adapter, and a 6 feet Ethernet LAN cable. Its body is made of plastic with the Dynalink branding and an LED indicator to the front. At the rear, starting from the top, you have a WPS button, 4 gigabit LAN ports, 1 gigabit input LAN port, 1 USB 3.0 port, a reset button, and the DC power input. To the top you have exhaust vents, and below the router you have 4 anti-skid rubber feet and some intake cooling vents. I will now show you how to set this up on your internet service provider's router and how to get started. There are two ways in which you can connect and configure this router. The first way is wirelessly using a mobile phone or tablet, and the second way is by connecting directly to your PC, laptop, MacBook or Android device that has a LAN port. To use the mobile method, the router comes pre-configured with usernames and passwords for the 2.4 and 5 GHz band, and using the login credentials below the router, you can connect any mobile device and gain access to the admin area. The second method is very straightforward. Using the included 6 feet Ethernet LAN cable, connect one end into the yellow port labeled Internet and the other end you plug into any available output port on your router provided by the Internet Service Provider and that's it. Once you connect to the router via Wi-Fi or LAN cable, to access the admin area, you simply open any browser and enter login.dynalink.com or 192.168.216.1. For the username, enter admin, and for each router, the password will be different and located below the router. Once entered, you'll be taken to the router's configuration settings. Once inside the admin area, you will first see the dashboard where you can access the various settings by clicking on these main icons or you can use this side panel. If you are connected to your ISP via Ethernet cable, you should see the internet status showing that you are connected to the internet. If you are connected using a mobile device, then you will still need to connect the router to your ISP using the LAN cable or you will not have internet service. The features of this router are quite extensive and don't require you to change any of them unless you are an advanced user and know exactly what you are doing and why you need to change any of these advanced settings. You may have noticed that during the unboxing that there is no user manual 
and that is because the manual is quite extensive and it also has to be downloaded in PDF format from the link they have provided. For basic users, you only need to be concerned with four main settings, changing the router's login information, setting up your Wi-Fi passwords, updating the firmware, and of viewing your connected devices and ensuring that the distribution optimization is configured. It is recommended that before you change any settings whatsoever that you first check for any firmware updates and complete those updates if any is available. To do so, simply click on the system settings option, then click firmware, click the check for new firmware button, and if any is available, select the update button to update the firmware. If the need may be, you can change the router's admin login credentials to avoid anyone simply checking below the router and gaining access. To do this, under System Settings, select Password and Time Zone, and here is where you can change the admin login username and password. Please note, be sure to record on paper or somewhere save your new admin login credentials, or you will be forced to perform a hard reset and you will lose all changes made in the admin area and you will be restored to default settings. To configure the dual band Wi-Fi bands, click on the Networks tab and click Wi-Fi and on the basic is where you can configure each frequency, either the 2.4 or 5 GHz band. Here you can select which type of network you would like it to be. You can change the name of the network from the default one located below the router and you can change the password for your new Wi-Fi network. There are also some advanced Wi-Fi settings and there is this one in particular called Band Steering that uses a smart feature that presents one Wi-Fi login instead of two that all your devices can log into and the router will intelligently move your devices to the less congested 5 GHz band for the best performance and leave the 2.4 band for devices that only have single band Wi-Fi. It's also a smart way to take away the confusion of which band one should connect to. From going through the user manual, I can tell you that there are mounting loads of features, some so advanced that time cannot permit nor do I have the know-it-all to demonstrate all of these great features, only to see that some of these features are really cool compared to what I'm accustomed to on my regular AC router. So if you would like to see all of the features this router has to offer before you decide to purchase, you can download the user manual from the link in the description below this video. So I successfully connected all my devices to the router and as you can see under connected devices, I have 49 devices connected. I have checked all of them and the transition from my old wireless router to this one was seamless. All I had to do was give this router the same Wi-Fi username and passwords from my previous router. Like most people, I don't have a lot of devices that uses Wi-Fi 6. Only recently, I received the Yugos AM6B Plus TV box and I received a Wi-Fi extender more than over a year ago that I could never get to work on my dual band AC router with a WPS connection. Well, I'm happy to announce that I finally got the Wi-Fi extender to work with this model and the TV box connects without issues. So the question is, how much of an improvement is this router over my previous one? To test this, I have the recorded results of the Wi-Fi bands and LAN port speed test from the Yugos AM6B Plus TV box from my last video, and I performed the same test under this new router. So these are the results of my Linksys router. As you can see on my 150 megabits per second connection, the 5 GHz band and the LAN port achieved 100% of my bandwidth, and the 2.4 band only achieved 54%. When the same test was performed on this new router, the results were slightly different. The 5 GHz band and the LAN port maintained their maximum bandwidth, but the 2.4 GHz band was not able to achieve maximum bandwidth also. 
So I can conclude that this Wi-Fi 6 router, through whatever performance optimization, improves the bandwidth of the 2.4 GHz band. And going forward, we shall see if in other boxes there is a definite difference or if it's just a one-off. The Wi-Fi extender on the other hand, as I mentioned, I could never get it to connect to my Linksys router via WPS, so that review never made it to my channel. However, connecting the extender to this new router was quick and easy, seeing that the extender uses Wi-Fi 6, so it had to be a compatibility issue with my Linksys router that was preventing it from being backwards compatible. So to connect this extender to the Dynalink router, you simply press and hold the WPS button for a few seconds until the LED starts flashing. Then on the extender, press and hold the WPS button and the pairing process will begin. Once it has successfully paired itself with the router, the WPS LED will remain solid. If you would like to check out this Wi-Fi extender, it's still available on Amazon with a 30% discount coupon attached to it. Just keep in mind that it only works when connected to a Wi-Fi 6 router. See the link in the description below this video. Another cool feature of this router that I like very much is its built-in FTP and Samba server feature. With this feature, simply plug any external storage device such as a pen drive, an external hard drive, or even something larger such as a NAS server and access your stored data via any browser or file browser that has a network FTP or Samba server feature. So viewers, there you have it. This was my review of the new Dynalink AX3600 DL WRX36 Wi-Fi 6 router. If you would like to get your hands on this model, it's currently sold on Amazon for $129.99. See the link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed my presentation. If you are new to this channel and enjoy the content and would like to see more, Hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving to be notified when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.